Hi everyone, welcome to the second installment ng Math 21 Review Series. This will be the first of the 10 videos dedicated for the review for LE2. And for this video, we'll be talking about rates of change and rectilinear motion. So as always, we'll start with the review. So try to recall that the average rate of change of y with respect to x on this interval is given by this thing here. It's a change in f over the change in x. And then the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at x naught um, is given by uh, the limit as this, the limit of the change in f over the change in x as this change in x uh, approaches zero. And remember, um, medyo same lang to, or actually the same nga to, sa limit definition and derivative natin. So that's why um, we let this be equal to f prime of x naught. Okay? So in other words, f prime of x naught or the derivative of f at x naught is just the instantaneous rate of change. All right, so suppose na meron tayong particle moving in a straight line. The particle, the particle can be anything actually. It can be a car uh, or even a person. So at a given time t, uh, we let s of t be the position of this particle um, along the s axis. So it makes sense to say na yung velocity natin or the velocity function is just equal to the derivative of the position function. Because remember, the derivative, we define that to be uh, the limit of the change in, well, in this case, the change in the position over the change in time. So it somehow makes sense na uh, velocity nga yun, or the instantaneous velocity ng particle. Um, of course, kapag speed yung gusto natin, we just take the absolute value since we don't take into account yung direction anymore. And kapag acceleration is just the derivative of this velocity function or the double derivative ng position function. So given VFT and AFT, uh, we can say something depending on their signs. So the sign of VFT actually tells us whether in the positive direction or the negative direction yung um, movement ng particle natin. And your acceleration, it tells us whether the particle's velocity is increasing or decreasing. So it's very important to take note. And then lastly, uh, we can also say something about the speed depending on the signs of these two here. So kapag same sila ng sign, uh, the particle speed is increasing or it's speeding up. Kapag opposite naman yung sign, um, the particle is speeding down. Okay, so you can think of it as like, um, let's say to yung velocity natin, tapos kapag same direction yung acceleration, it kind of makes sense na bibilis siya, no? Kasi parang tinutulak niya to the same direction. However, kapag dito yung velocity, pero opposite direction yung acceleration, parang kinakontradict na yung movement, no? So in other words, parang you can expect that it's slowing down. Okay, so let's go to the first problem right here. So we consider a sphere na yung radius niya 10 units. Uh, we let V be the sphere's volume and yung S naman yung surface area niya. So we want to ask, how fast does the quantity S over V change with respect to the sphere's radius? So we'll try to think about it for a bit. Ano nga ba yung gusto nating hanapin? And ano yung meron tayo? And then let's try solving the problem. Okay, so I hope that you tried to uh, solve this problem right here. So let's focus on ano yung hinihingi sa atin. So somehow, we can see na yung gusto natin, yung rate of change itong S over V this ratio here with respect to the sphere's radius. So parang gusto natin na since rate of change yung pinag-uusapan, uh, we'll consider derivatives, of course. So gusto natin mahanap yung derivative nitong S over V, nitong buong S over V with respect to the sphere's radius. So D over, uh, D of S of V all over DR. So ito yung gusto natin hanapin. But of course, um, pwede natin muna hanapin kung saan nga ba equal yung S over V. So let's do just that. So, of course, uh, yung R radius natin. And if you can recall, yung formula for the surface area is given by 4 pi R squared. That's the surface area ng isang sphere. And then yung volume is just 4 thirds pi R cubed. So what will happen is, yung cancel out yung 4, pati yung pi. Ito rin mawawala and isang R na lang. So you can think of it as like yung natitira na lang ay 1 all over 1 third R and eventually it will simplify to 3 over R. Okay? 
So, hanapin na natin yung derivative nito with respect to r and madali lang naman, no? Kasi ito, we can actually rewrite this as um, 3r to the negative 1, right? Pwede naman ganyan yung pagkasulat. So, power rule lang, no? And ito, eventually, it's just going to be 3 times negative 1 times r raised to negative 2. So, bawasan yung same exponent after ma bring down siya. Okay? So, we're going to expect the same result here. Um, it's going to be negative c over r squared. So, same dito. And we have to evaluate this as at r equals 10, no? Kasi, uh, given na naman yung radius natin. Okay? So, dito, we'll just find negative 3 over 100. So, that is the rate of change nitong um, ratio na to with respect to the current radius ng sphere natin, which is 10 units. Okay? So, if we want to interpret the result, uh, let's look at negative 3 over r squared. Uh, kapag lumalaki yung radius, lumiliit yung um, rate of change, no? So, that's why we say na increasing the given sphere's radius will just decrease yung ratio ng surface area to the volume. So, we actually use this measurement in science. Alright, let's have the second one. The second problem tells us na uh, may toy car, may toy car moving along a line. And yung position function niya is given by this thing here. If you factor it out, you can also express it as um, this expression here. So t is in seconds, uh, the position is in centimeters and positive directions to the right of the origin. So of these three questions, we want to ask, kailan nga ba uh, nasa left yung toy car to the left of the origin? Um, kailan nga ba yung, um, kailan mag change direction yung toy car natin and kailan siya speeding up or slowing down? Okay. So try to think about it, try to recall your mga concepts from earlier. Uh, we'll be discussing this in a minute again. Okay, so I know that the problem is a bit challenging because tatlo yung hinihingi niya, but sige, let's approach it one at a time. So let's first uh, focus on the first question. So kailan nga ba nasa left ng origin yung car? Well, yung position function given na naman tayo, but we just want to know, ay, di ba, kapag negative yung position function natin, is being to the left siya ng origin, right? It makes sense to think of it that way. So, we're just going to see which values of t um, will be, will give this s of t function here. Will result to the output of a negative number, okay? So, gusto ko bigyan natin ng emphasis itong factored version or factored form ng uh, polynomial function natin. So this actually tells us the critical points, which will be very important for our problem. So meron tayong, um, or in other words, at t equals 6 and t equals 3, making 0 yung function natin, right? At t equals 6 and t equals 3, um, our function will be 0. Um, S of t will be 0, right? Because of this uh, expression right here. So we'll be considered them as like critical values and we will consider natin yung mga intervals na um, having these things to be taken into account. So in other words, yung iko consider lang natin na uh, uh, intervals will be these uh, intervals right here. So you can see, kino consider niya yung uh, critical values. So from 0 to 3, and then at 3 mismo, t equals 3. Uh, between 3 and 6, at 6, and then of course yung uh, beyond 6 na. Okay? So medyo madali lang yung part na to kasi we just need to evaluate ano nga ba yung sign ng function natin, S of t, given um, the values within the intervals. So, kukuha lang tayo ng test points. No? For example, dito, if t is equal to 1, um, well, for the first part, ito, lagi siyang positive, no? this part here. Um, dito. It will always be positive kasi squared siya. Right? So, if t is equal to 1, ito negative. May negative tayo dito. So, you can expect na, yeah, positive na yung uh, result niya. Of course, at t equals 3 and 6, 0 naman siya. Naging 0 yung function natin. And then, um, kung tayo test point dito, if t equals 4, positive to, positive times negative will be negative. And then lastly, uh, kapag 7 to, positive ulit to, and then negative, so this will be negative, positive, positive, so negative siya. So with that, uh, makaka, makakaroon na tayo ng conclusion na we can say na given this table of values, 
the toy cars to the left of the origin, kapag yung T natin ay in between 3 and 6, may kita natin sa interval, negative yung value niya. And when T is greater than 6. Okay. So next one, uh, kailan nga ba nag-change direction yung toy car natin? So since we're talking about a change in direction, maybe we can take into account yung velocity function. So let's try to first find the velocity function. So remember, the velocity is just given by the derivative of position function. And you can find that to be negative t squared plus 10t minus 24. And you can express that, you can express it as this function here. Okay. So of course, kaya kaya nyo naman compute in derivative. Tingin lang kayo sa position function, derivative nito. Derivative nito, nito, nito. And then eventually you'll get this one and you can just factor it out. Pina factor natin para mas madali siya tingnan. Uh, makakita natin kung ano yung critical values natin, which are 4 and 6. Nakikita natin dito. And uh, we'll consider intervals um, taking these things into account. Alright, so indeed, um, nakikita natin na yung ginagawa. Yeah, if we pay this to zero, we'll find the critical uh, values that we need to consider. And then, um, maybe, well, some of us may think na siguro at 4 and 6, um, mag-change direction siya kasi 0 naman yung uh, velocity natin. However, magkakaroon tayo ng problem kapag yun yung pag-iisip natin. Kasi we still need to check kung mag-change nga ba na direction. Kasi pwede naman na, let's say, positive yung velocity mo this interval, and then mag-zero siya. Pero kapag positive siya ulit, hindi naman mag-change yung direction, di ba? So, kailangan na makonfirm natin na um, from positive, mag-change siya to negative, or from negative, may positive. So, kailangan may pagpalit ng sign, right? So, we'll still consider a table of values and titingnan natin kung saan nga ba um, positive, negative, or saan nga ba mag-change direction yung uh, toy car natin. So, we can confirm uh, pwede nyo i-check isa, isa You'll just consider um, test points ulit. For example, if t equals 1, this will be negative, negative. Of course, the whole thing will be negative. 0 na kagad at 4 and 6. Kasi, yeah, we can see naman dito. Maybe 0 shot those values. Between 4 and 6, for example, 5, this will be positive. This will be negative. So, positive nga siya. And for values greater than 6, for example, 7, um, dito it will be positive, this will be positive, so negative siya. Okay, so nakita natin dito from negative, maging positive, so may change ng direction dito. It really does change directions at um, t equals 4, and then same din dito from positive to negative, so nag change direction siya at t equals 6. Okay, so we can now conclude na indeed um, at 4 and 6, may change direction yung third car natin. Okay. Last problem. Kailan nga ba siya speeding up and slowing down? Uh, remember yung na-recall natin from kanina. Kapag same sign yung velocity and yung acceleration, speeding up. Kapag opposite sign, slowing down. So hanapin muna natin yung velocity function. Ah, rather yung acceleration function. Okay. So derivative ulit ng velocity function. Nahanap na naman natin kanina. Okay. So for reference, andyan siya. Uh, Kitang-kita naman yung derivative niya. It's negative 2t plus 10. And this will be 0. Okay. So it's just negative 2t plus 10. And um, I guess we can consider another table of values here. So compare natin yung dalawa. We analyze the signs of dft and dft. So sa baba, nakalagay yung um, dft tsaka ast. So kuha lang tayo let ng test point. So dito siguro kahit 0 na, no? Kapag zero dito, okay, kapag zero dito, well, negative, negative, negative. So, negative yung uh, velocity natin. Kapag zero to, it's 10. So, positive siya. Okay. At four, of course, zero to. And then dito, it will be negative eight plus 10. So, positive. Um, at between four and five, um, let's say 4.5. Ito positive, negative. So, yeah, it's positive. And then uh, negative 4.5 times 2, um, times negative 2 rather, that's positive as well. 
I think it's 19, if I'm not mistaken. And oh, I in the negative two times 4.5 rather. Okay, so it's just one. And at five, uh, kita naman natin dito. And of course, we can do the same for the rest of the intervals. We just need to consider test points and then tina natin ko yung sign niya. So it really helps na factored form yung expression natin. Okay, so you can verify na tama nga yung mga nakuha nating values. Okay. So with that, um, I guess you can already have a conclusion dito. So, titignan natin, alin dito yung same sign, alin yung magka-opposite sign. So, same sign dito at saka dito. So, it's speeding up at, yeah, at in between 4 and 5 at saka C greater than 6. Okay. And then, opposite sign naman siya um, here and then here. I think yun lang. Yeah. So we can see in the conclusion later. Yeah. Uh, nag opposite signs nga at uh, in between 0 and 4 at saka 5 and 6. So slowing siya. So slowing down siya this time. Okay. So that's it. Um, we have already solved the problem. We'll be discussing more examples and more concepts in the next videos.